Are you watching Geeks Assemble? Hello and uh, welcome to Geeks Assembled. Um, it's another Christmas cast, and today we are talking about a movie which is regarded as one of the best Christmas classics ever. Uh, we are talking Frank Capra's It's a Wonderful Life, starring James Stewart and Donna Reed. Um, I think we'll just go straight into it and we'll ask, go for the opening thoughts on this from this uh, movie. So, um, Beef Dad, let's go to you first. What's your uh, opening thought on, thoughts on It's a Wonderful Life? Well, it came out um, about a year and a half before I was born. I can't remember how many times I saw it during my childhood. Um, it's extremely special. It's a, it's a brilliant film. Um, it is just so cleverly conceived. And uh, we know where they nicked some of the stuff from Back to the Future from. Um, it's it's a bit it can be a bit of a heart wrencher in places but that's it's a very very emotional film it's designed to target your emotions and it does it brilliantly and it doesn't matter i i to be perfectly honest i don't know anyone who has not found tears in their eyes at the very end um yeah, excellent cast. It's brilliantly acted. Um, it's amazing how two of the most memorable characters out of it, apart from James Stewart and Donna Reed, um, the two other really memorable characters, which is Clarence Oddbody, the angel, and Mr. Gower, the chemist. Um, and both of them were born in England. They were both British actors. And, uh, of course, you had Ward Bond in it as well, um, who was famous for, for Wagon Train way back in the 1900s and frozen to death. And, yes, it was, it, it's a brilliant film, as I say, brilliantly conceived, brilliantly acted, superbly directed, and... I love every minute of it still. Well, that's uh, a good opening thought from Beef Dad there. Um, let's go. Well, I'll, let's go to Kevin because this is the first time he's seen this, and he's only just finished watching it, so it's all fresh in his head. Five minutes ago, yeah. <laughs> so we'll go to Kevin. Unmute yourself, young man. <laughs> I know I'm still young. <laughs> oh. Uh, when, I, I, when I first heard of this movie, it was in a, probably a Doctor Who episode or, or in a, probably another uh, movie that I saw a fragment of it, the ending, with the bells and stuff. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. It wasn't bored at all. Uh, I, I chose the black and white version because that's the way it needs to be seen and not the, I'm going to colorize it and it doesn't fit in the era scene. <laughs> so um, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. The main actors were lovely. I thought she uh, he was going going for Violet, not Mary. But hey, <laughs> there we go. Almost cried at the end. It was all yeah, and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I really love the story. So uh, that's that's it for me. Yeah, I'm not crying. I've just got something in my eye. Um, let's uh, move over to Stephen Price, and uh, what was your opening thoughts on It's a Wonderful Life, Stephen? Well, Kevin is not the only one. I, it's the first time I've seen it today. I have, oh. seen, clips, I have seen clips of it um, <coughs> over the years. I've never watched it before. Yes, uh, it's... To me, it started out a bit boring, but um, when a storyline like changed and he, he, he lost 
I can't remember how much money, and um, it was very good. And like Beef Dad said, uh, the emotions will get you in the end, which it nearly did with me. Very, very good film. And we don't really want that. We don't really want an emotional Welshman on the cast because... <laughs> oh, no, we don't. <laughs> um, let's, go to, uh, let's go to Susan and Alex. Let's have their opening thoughts. Over to you too. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. I love this movie. I've seen it probably 40 times. Um, I, I ended up in the middle of it going off to make fudge and I was just... I mean, it's still like I could see it right in front of my face. Um, I guess my, what, what, I, I love the laughs in it. I love it when he runs into the tree. I love it when, uh, when Mary's in the, in the bushes without her clothes. <laughs> and he's got her robe and he's sort of um, holding it ransom. And I love the bit where the, 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 the floor in the gym pulls back and then begin, and it becomes a pool. <laughs> I mean, oh my God, that's it's, it's a, there's some really awesome laughs in it, and yeah, it's a it's totally a tearjerker. And so here's Alex. Um, yeah, I, of course, this has been often duplicated, especially in the '70s and the '80s. And I mean, it's an interesting. It's technically five stories in one. It's a it's a, a guy that doesn't want to be in a small town, but basically he ends up saving the small town, and the small town ends up saving him because, unfortunately, Uncle Billy should not be running to the bank with money. So um, he forgot that the $8,000 he had was wrapped up in the newspaper that he handed Mr. Potter. And Mr. Potter, of course, kept it and wanted to see the Baileys in jail, and he didn't get his wish. So, uh, yeah, so in a way, it's it's small town. Do you want to go to a big town? If you go to a big town, nobody knows you. Then you're going to end up with 10 million Mr. Potters, and you better have money. And, yeah, money isn't as important as life or family or wives or anything like that. So if you watch the movie, you basically figure out that he's the invisible you know, seeing he's invisible in a way, but he's basically the mayor and he's the fair judge and he's the fair accountant, whereas Potter and everybody else, especially Potter, is the Scrooge. He's the Republican and you better do what he tells you or you're going to be out in the street. So, um, yeah, so it, it's kind of interesting. Like I said, at the end, spoilers, the town ends up saving him. Which, you know, it's, you know, if you're human, you hope that you see good and, and receive good. You know, two ways, you give and receive. Mm. Thank, yeah. Thanks, Alex. That's, um, let's move on to, are we, Brian, still here? Yeah, Brian, over to you. Beth, call him Brian. Me? Yes, you're the only one called Brian in the cast. Aww. What can I say about It's a Wonderful Life? Let's see. Well, first of all, this is my first time seeing It's a Wonderful Life. I haven't seen it not once in all the years, like, Mostly this would be, I think, a traditional movie to see every Christmas. But uh, this will be, but, but mostly this is my first time seeing this movie. Um, for, for, um, straight through. And initially I thought it was three hours before I even started watching. Because that's mostly how long it is on network TV. But it's just... Um, a little bit over, like, 10 minutes over two hours. But I I really enjoyed this film, and this is a uh, good classic movie to uh, watch for Christmas. Uh, I can mostly see why um, 
my family and my brother mostly watch at Christmas Day because I think it's like one of the movies that you need to watch on Christmas Day or even on Christmas Eve. It doesn't really matter which, but this is like one of those movies. Um, yeah, yeah, this is, this movie, it's got kind of like got the feel of um, when George Bailey's gone, like when George, George Bailey's hitting his all point low and uh, thinking about committing suicide and the uh, ghost. Uh, um, well, what's his name? Uh, I forgot his name. What the, what, the guardian angel, or...? Yeah, Clarence, is that his name? Clarence, Clarence yeah. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, his guardian goes to Clarence, shows him what it would be like without even being born. It's kind of got that, um, to me, it kind of had the feel of uh, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, feel to it of like how well his life would have been like or how the whole town would have been like if he was not born at all because Christmas Cow had that same feel to it it was only a little bit different there's only a little differences to it but yeah I this movie is just one of all time classic movies for the holidays around Christmas time. I enjoyed it, loved it, all of it. Well, you know, I'll, I'll say it, I've said it many a times. I'll say it again. Um, this is why I like doing the classics because we get people like Kevin, Brian, who's never ever seen it. Even Stephen Price has never seen it. Uh, but introducing the young guys to these classic old movies just brilliant um as for me as i said into the into the introduction it's classed as a christmas masterpiece um i don't know why though because i think it's only about the last 45 minutes of the movie it's set at christmas uh, um, the, the, the rest of the movie before all that it's got really nothing to do with christmas um but it works. It really does work. Um, it's the build-up, build-up, and say the last 40, 40 minutes is Christmas. Um, yeah, James Stewart, pretty, brilliant actor in his day, um, and this is no exception to me. Um, it's just brilliant. Um, as I said, as it's been said, the comedy's there. This, as, as Susan mentioned, the you know uh, with James Stewart and Donna Reed, where they're coming back from the. Um, the prom night or whatever it was, it, um, or dressing in other gear because all the clothes was wet, and that is a brilliant scene, or that comedy scene, that with the bush and losing a robe, um, and also the wonderful, the, the wonderful um, portrayal of Clarence Oddbody as the guardian angel. Um, it's just because he's just so out of place in in that town, but he's trying to show show you know James Stewart the way of what this would be like, what his life, how his life affects other people. Um, I've only got one little gripe at this movie. You'd never, you'd never see or find out what happens to Mr. Potter. Because I always want to, you want to know if he got his comeuppance. You, you never find anything out like that. Because he's the bad guy of the movie. And uh, uh, no, bad guys in movies should always get the comeuppance, and you don't see it in this movie. But there again, it is supposedly a Christmas movie, so do they want uh, a bad ending for Mr. Potter? I don't know. Um, so let's go favourite moments, or as you say, as I say, things what you didn't like about the movie. Um, Stephen Price, we'll go to you. Any favourite uh, things I didn't like about the movie? Uh, James Stewart kissing a woman, a woman a bit too much for my liking. <laughs> You're so romantic, you are, aren't you, Stewart? <laughs> uh, favourite moments uh, when he was on the bridge, he started to cry, and uh, the policeman uh, knew who he was, and when he went back to his family and all that, mm. that was uh, very good. Yeah, yeah. 
but yeah, that's a good scene. Um, uh, Beef Dad, let's have some sense now. <laughs> not saying that Stephen Price doesn't talk sense. Bit optimistic of you, isn't it? Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> I love the um, the beginning where they where she's they're having dinner and the maid is listening and he says well well, why don't you just come and lay a place for yourself come and sit down and then you'll have no problem hearing anything and uh, the 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 girl that played the maid she was just really funny she was very good um another magic moment was the two kids at the party um, at his brother's um, prom um, and their plot to open the floor so that people would, well, particularly George and Mary would fall into the water. And I remember that one of the joys of uh, this was, of course, the guy who the guy who was doing the plotting with him and who actually turned the key and sent them all in was the guy who originally played Alfalfa in our gang, which was a, a very old series of films um, that I used to watch on sat- the Saturday morning pictures. Uh, oh, I- they, they used to show him on Saturday morning's TV when I was a young kid. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. The, he's the guy who used to play Alpha Alpha. Stick it up here, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, and of course Lionel Barrymore is just brilliant as the villain in this. But I mean, he was one of a him, his sister Ethel. I mean, at that time they were the basically the masters of Hollywood, and also of uh, Broadway because they would appear on stage in Broadway in all the um, Shakespeare plays and that sort of thing. All the big classic dramas. Well, you you always had Ethel Barrymore, you always had John Barrymore um, and Lionel Barrymore because John Barrymore was the, the other brother and of course he did horror films. He was brilliant at them. And uh, the Barrymore legacy still carries on in Hollywood. Doesn't it, Lee? Would it? Would that be Drew? Yes, Drew Barrymore. Is, uh, I'm not sure if she's the granddaughter or great granddaughter of um, Lionel Barrymore. But uh, yeah, it's it's a. Uh, as I say, the the Barrymore legacy still carries on, um, almost a hundred years later, because John John Barrymore did stuff. Um, in the th- early 30s, silent films. Mm. Uh, and, yeah, the, they, they're just mm. just a brilliant, fa- brilliant acting family. Yeah, well, unfortunately, Drew is semi-retired. I mean, occasionally she'll do something, but she's kind of semi-retired. And the Charlie's Angels production didn't work out. After yeah. the second uh, movie and the new TV show, that didn't quite work out as big as she thought. The first movie was good, but. But yeah, she's sort of semi-retired now. Oh, thank you for that. Yeah. And I think I might as well take up knitting. Uh, yeah, uh, and of course, the last the last moment um, where all the townspeople come and bring their money, that is magical because... Not only do all the townspeople bring their money and put it on the table, but even the bank examiner puts money into the pot, which, and the policemen that have come to arrest him just stand there and tear up the warrant. And it's just magic. And then, of course, you get the bell on the Christmas tree ring, and you know that Clarence has got his wings. So, yeah, and that's when you go, hmm. Magic, absolutely magic. Can I can yeah. I say something? Can I say something? I wish some. Yeah. Uh, I wish a lot of people like that would come to my house now and give me money because I'm really broke. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, uh, what can we say? I think that a lot of people out there is going through the same thing there, Stephen. Okay, uh, so honest. let me, I'm sorry, Lee, I don't mean to jump in. I know you're moderating. This is my mother from Cuba. Oh, hello. And uh, of course, she... And you. To all of, you. of course, she's been here for what, 40 years now? No. Uh, no 51. 51, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> so, because they're visiting for just a second, um, Susie's been talking to them and, and showing them a few Christmas things. I mean, we could, turn the, we could turn the laptop over and you could see all the Christmas cards that we have hanging up and stuff. So, I mean, I don't necessarily celebrate big but uh well, actually i have to be very careful because so uh so yeah it's a little tied up in the cords and the safety safety uh pitches and stuff i know that fish i know that fish <laughs> so if you step away then you can see so, ah. our little rough entertainment center. So, a little trip. Well, 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 we're um, well, we're in, we're your lab then, Alex and Susan. Do you want to uh, give us your? Do you want to give us your favorite moments of the movie? Or um, think yeah, I mean, th there's a lot of moments that I that I like. I mean, like I said, I didn't see it until what maybe, what was it, ten? No, maybe twenty years ago. I finally sat down and, and watched it from beginning to end. And I can see why it's often imitated. Uh, because basically, it's five stories in one. It's the guy that wants to get away, as I mentioned before, unofficial mayor of the town. Without him, Potter would be running everything. Uh, he ends up saving the town, and the town ends up saving him. And then, of course, you have the other... Wait a minute, and then you have the other, you know, issue about time travel and seeing what your life would be like if you hadn't been born. And in most cases, uh, it does matter if you're born, and it does matter the life that you lead. And uh, so you don't need to, you don't need to uh, wonder a hundred percent about that. But yes, it. I, I mean, most of the moments I like, and most of the characters I like. Uh, I mean, it's an older movie, but it's still a very entertaining one. Okay, so what's your favorite moment? It's a wonderful line. Yeah. Yeah, no, the whole thing, everything, especially when they come and they bring the money, all the people they know, and just dump it on the table. It's very moving, yeah. But you know one movie I like too a lot? A Child Christmas in Wales. I don't know if you guys know that movie. I don't remember it at the moment. A Child's Christmas in Wales. Okay, so Susie, why don't you do yours and then, because we don't want to stop their podcast altogether or, or increase it. Yeah, um, let's see. The um, My favorite bits is like the, um, is like I said, when the, when the, Jim Floor spreads open and fall and everybody falls in the pool, and I love the bit where um, I I do like the part where uh, where Mr. Bailey is in the is in the in the in the part where he's not um, where he's not alive. I love that that sort of you know despair. I um. Alex was saying, "Oh my gosh! Without without, you know, Bailey, the everything turns into Forty Second Street, or in or in uh, you know, or Piccadilly Circus in the in the seventies. You know, it's a bit rough, rough around the edges, and there's lots of uh, you know strip joints and other stuff. So um, yeah, that that makes a big difference in this thing. Anyway, those are my favorite bits. Thanks." Cheers, Susan. Um, let's move over. Uh, Kevin. Here. Just, uh, Alex, back, back, to Kev, back to Kevin. Uh, yeah, Hello, Kevin. Uh, uh, the beginning, uh, Mr. Potter being the villain, like, mm. <laughs> um, and the whole ending, I really love that. Um, you know, we're putting all the money, like that's $3,000 right there. <laughs> 
En uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the whole movie. So yeah, there are lots of favorite moments. Also the moment when he isn't even born. <laughs> He's like, what the yeah. heck is happening? <laughs> like a sort of time travel. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I agree with what Brian said. It's like um, as a Christmas carol, show, showing them what could have been, what has been, and things to come, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see, is, is Brian there? Yes, I'm here. You got any bits you liked or disliked? Uh no, 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 not the night. Not I dislike um, things I like. Um, I probably, uh, probably I would. My favorite would have to probably be um, the like the um. Uh, the scene, like where um, like okay, the scene, like where um, what well, we see the scene, like where he uh, I think when he meets Clarence for the first time, and like like when Clarence is uh, explaining to him that he's the guardian angel and he's the um, here to help him out and everything. Um, I think, and another, I think another scene I liked was, um, well, I think when, uh, when, uh, Mary and, and, uh, George was, uh, throwing the, the locks into the abandoned house and soon later to be the actual home. Right on within the film, yeah. Because I honestly didn't know that was from "It's a Wonderful Life." Because I've seen that scene a, 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 um once before, but I didn't I didn't know where it was from "It's a Wonderful Life." I'm sure I've seen that today. Yeah, it, 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 it always pays to sit down and watch a movie from beginning to end. I've learned that doing these casts. There's just a few movies where I've never sat down and watched from beginning to end. Um, yeah, so well, I think mostly, uh, yeah, those are my um, two favorite scenes within the film. Oh, brilliant. Um, for me, the scene with the pharmacist and um, George Bailey as a young boy, that is a very good standout scene. Um, you know, where he puts the poison in the tablets and he, he's, he, go, he goes, young George Bailey, and hits him across. Across the uh, ear, I mean, you even see the blood pouring out of his ear at some point as well. And I agree, the scenes with Clarence uh, jumping in the river to save to save him, and also he's, well, Clarence saves him again in the house from the from the police. And, you know, run, 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 George, run! Um, brilliant scenes. That um, I, it is, as I said, it to me. I, I can see why people class it as a Christmas movie. But uh, it, it, it's but the Christmas the Christmas period in the movie is very short lived to be honest, but it still works. Um, yeah, that's what I was also going to say before you pointed it out early on with him here that it doesn't start out and doesn't really feel like a Christmas movie until the like the half, first like the last half of the movie. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. Yeah, I mean the the film company, you know jumped on the bandwagon, released it on the 20th of December of that year, <laughs> and it took off there. But, um, yeah, it's um, all in all, it's an enjoyable movie. As people have said, it's a must-watch every festive season, I would say. Um, if you don't like the classic movies, you give this one a chance. The, you know, the acting in this is brilliant. Um, I would say watch the black-and-white version, because colorized. It just doesn't do it justice. Doesn't do it justice. A um, yeah, there's a colorized version, but it's it, it doesn't look right. You know what I mean? Just doesn't go. Um, well, most colorized versions don't really do. So yeah, yeah, 
it was filmed in black. It was filmed in black and white as a black and white movie. Watch it as a black and white movie. It's the best way. Um, so we'll we'll go to final say and scores then. So if nobody's got anything else to say, we'll go to final say and scores then. Um, Alex, I mean, uh, right? Isn't it true also that I heard I saw a little video where they said that uh, Capra was sort of a perfectionist and he was a little strict. Yeah, and then I guess that the movie really didn't do good for the first 20 years, that it was sort of underground, and then it was, um, it, it was really big. Yeah, yeah it became really yeah. big, especially when, it, when it's on TV. So, uh, mm. Like, I remember watching it on TV, but the colorized version, and I was watching it from, what, 9 until 1 or something like that with the commercials. But, um, yeah. I'd, I'd have to say in terms of the writing and in terms of the plot, I'd give it probably an 11. In terms of the acting and stuff, I'd give it probably a 9. Uh, like I said, it, it is kind of funny how it kind of won me over because I remember I didn't want to watch it at first and it kind of won me over. You know, I mean, if it's a well-made movie, human nature is human nature. I'm sure there's tons of people that, you know, want, want to leave or they want to be rich and there's many different types of riches in the world. It's not just money, and uh, and you know you have think, to be you have think, to be humane. I think, yeah, I think yeah. Fam family is the biggest rich richness of anything, really. So but, uh, uh, yeah. So I'd have to say that. Okay, what do you say, visiting mom? Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys. I say I give it a twenty if I could, but. Since I <laughs> one to ten, then it's definitely a ten plus. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and and Susan. I'm here. Um, I'll give it a ten out of ten. I just love it. Wonderful, and and I just wish you all a merry Christmas from our house to yours. Same to you. <laughs> um, beef dad. What? Yes. <laughs> Especially that, yes. Um, well, on a recent vote, he came out top on the best Christmas film of all time, um, beating Elf and Miracle of 42nd Street. Um, it was also, oddly enough, he was talking about uh, Frank Capra and what but this was his favourite film. And to be honest, it's probably one of my favourite films, which is why I got the DVD. And yeah, it'll get a, a solid gold. In fact, no, let's make it a solid diamond, 10 out of 10. Well, there's a bit of difference there, isn't there? Cats, so we're not, um, was it a bit of variety on this uh, cast? Um, Brian. Hello, Brian. Yes, I'm here. And what's your score? My score. My score would probably have to be a 10 out of 10, Lee. Because this is. One of probably one of the greatest movies of all time ever made for for the season holidays for like Christmas. It's just one of the best. So I absolutely love this film, and mostly there's a little lesson for this within this movie. That every choice that you make matters, and it, Whatever, and if uh, every choice that you make matters, and you need, and whatever it may be, it sets the course of every action that comes to be. Yeah, well, I tell you something. I'm I'm shocked. That was a bit of wisdom there. Um, <laughs> coming from Brian. <laughs> yes. Anyways, let's move over to Kevin. <laughs> Yeah, Kevin's in shock. Um, oh, my she's got God. <laughs> <laughs> what she's got, Kevin. 
Uh, well, for a black or white movie, the Christmas this movie that goes. Wait a minute. I'm going to give this a ten out of ten. Oh, well, sorry, we'll, we'll be boring you there, Kim. You fall in shape. Come on, uh, Kevin. <laughs> come on, come on, wake up, Kevin. Um, Stephen. Right. Uh, this film must have been filmed in part of it in Wales. The amount of rain in a film. <laughs> you know, he's obsessed with rain. He's obsessed with rain. Oh dear. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I give this. Uh, I would have given this eleven, but I'll give it a ten. The reason why I'm only given it a ten out of ten is because of the the kissing scene. Why didn't uh, James Stewart just eat that instead? My <laughs> <laughs> like, God. <sighs> Oh dear me! Ah, we do have a laugh on these guys. And um, for me, um, do I go down the do I go down the monotonous route of um, going with everybody else on the scores? Yes, I do. I'm sorry. We're a monotonous cast. We're a monotonous cast, shall we say? And I'm going to go a ten. Um, and I, you know, if you feel upset and angry that we always seem to like things, that's because we do. You know, if we like things, we say we like them. If we don't like them, we say we don't. And this one is a 10 out of 10. So I would like to thank these guys here. Beef Dad, I'd like to thank you for, you know, joining us on our cast all year through, when you can, of course. Um, Nine. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Kevin, when you can, of course, when you can join us. Thanks for joining us this year. And... Yeah. It was a wonderful podcast to you there. As uh, Brian, I'd like to thank you for um, deciding to watch movies when I've told you to. Uh, <sighs> anytime. Yes, um, I'd like to thank Stephen for joining the Geeks this year as well and getting involved and talking rain. And rain. Yeah, yeah always rain. rain. Always rain. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'd like, and I'd like to thank the two lovebirds, um, Alex and Susan, for well, just just being Alex and Susan, really. You know what I mean. <laughs> and from me, I'd like to thank everybody who watches these videos, who likes the videos, who dislikes the videos. Because hey, if you like it or dislike it, you've still watched it. Um, please leave a comment below. Tell us what you thought of the movie. Tell us if you know who's your favourite member of the cast. Tell us who you would like to be um, exterminated, and um, we know which one that would be. Hi, Brian. Bye. See what I mean? I didn't say bye. I said hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and shall we say we'll meet you all again in 2018, because this is our final Christmas cast, so... So from everybody here, I hope you have a brilliant, brilliant Christmas, and we'll see you next year. Bye-bye.